Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. If you've watched my previous videos, you may have noticed that this box has been sitting on the shelf for a few weeks. This is the Prusa i3 MK3S Plus, the gold standard for hobbyist 3D printers. I bought this for mainly one reason. I have more than 10 3D printers, and most of them print pretty similarly in terms of print quality. If I print the same 3D model with the same filament using each of these printers behind me, I probably can't tell them apart. I paid $750 and $50 shipping for this Prusa. Today, I will unbox and assemble this $800 printer and see if it can print out of the box better than my other printers. Let's open up this box and see what's inside. All the parts are neatly organized into separate boxes. We also have these manuals, which are super clear like textbooks. These are pretty much the best 3D printing manuals I've ever seen. Let's open up these boxes and see what's inside. Inside this pizza box, we have the Y-axis carriage and the printer's main frame. It's quite a heavy metal frame and the thickness is about six millimeters. We also have a heated bed and a spring steel PEI print surface. In this motor box, we have five stepper motors, the X, Y, Dual Z, and the extruder. This contains all the plastic 3D printed parts we need to assemble this printer. Inside this box, there are a lot of parts, the hot end, fans, the motherboard, the LCD screen, and all the wires and tools that we need. Let's take a closer look at the motherboard. It's an Einze Rambo six layer motherboard. The retail price of this board is around $100. The processor is just an 8-bit AT Mega 2560, but it has double the memory of an ordinary 8-bit processor and double the speed, which is 16 megahertz. It's a bit slow, but since we normally print at around 50 millimeters per second, an even slower processor should be able to handle the G-code commands. The stepper drivers are TMC2130. They are silent drivers and also support sensorless homing, which is why you didn't see any limit switches on this printer. The motherboard quality is pretty good. It's thick and heavy and also comes with three fuses. This box includes all the metal parts. We only have six metal parts for the whole frame. The other parts are all 3D printed. We have four 25 by 25 extrusions and two metal panels for the front and the back. The thickness is also about six millimeters. Inside this tube, we have three sets of linear rods for the X, Y, and Z motion system. There are three cable looms for the heated bed, hot end, and the X motor. Finally, we have the power supply. This is a Delta power supply. The retail price of a Delta PSU is around $100. Compared to a power supply without a brand, which only costs around $10 to $15, or a mean well, which costs $40, this should be a very high quality PSU. Okay, let's start putting this printer together. First, we will install the Y axis. Here is the bag of screws and other materials we will need to assemble this part. Since there are a lot of parts, Make sure to try and sort them in order to stay organized. Set that aside for now. Take out the four aluminum extrusions and the front and rear plates. From the pizza box, take out the aluminum frame and the Y carriage. Stand up the frame on its side. 
take the two longer extrusions and place them like this next to the frame. Make sure that you put them on the correct side with the Prusa logo and the safety sticker. Take eight of the M5 by 16 screws and use them to secure both of the extrusions. Next, take the shorter extrusions and place them next to the frame on the other side. Take another eight of the M5 by 16 screws and secure them. Insert two T-nuts into one of the short extrusions. It should be the one behind the yellow label. We will use these T-nuts to mount the power supply later. Then align the back metal plate and secure it with eight M5 by 16 screws. Do the same to the front metal plate and use the same screw to secure it. Lift the frame onto its side. Take the four anti-vibration feet and put one near the end of each extrusion like this. Insert the foot and then rotate it 90 degrees to lock it into place. Take out the bearing, one M3 by 18 screw, two M3 by 10 screws, this nylon nut, two of these M3 nuts, and the Y belt idler. Put the nylon nut on this side of the idler and make sure the rubber inside of it is facing you. Then insert the bearing inside the idler and secure it with the M3 by 18 screw, but don't tighten it completely. Test it with your finger to ensure that it can still spin freely. Insert the two M3 nuts on both sides of the Y belt idler. It should look like this. Place the idler on the front plate. C1 should be facing outward. Secure the Y belt idler with the two M3 by 10 screws. You can spin it again to make sure that it can still rotate. Take the Y axis motor, the Y motor holder, four M3 by 10 screws, and two M3 nuts. Place the holder on the motor. Make sure that it's in the right direction. The longer arm should be at the same side as the motor cable. Take the Y motor holder and insert the two nuts. Secure the holder with the two M3 by 10 screws. Now you need the Y carriage, three linear bearings, three bearing clips, six of these M3 nylon nuts, and six M3 by 12 screws. Place the bearings onto the Y carriage. Make sure that the tiny rows of balls inside of them are on the sides. Place the bearing clip over the bearing and insert two M3 by 12 screws. Turn the Y carriage. On this side, place the nylon nuts on both of the screws. Secure the screws with the clamp like this. It will be easier if you have a hex nut driver. Repeat this process for the remaining linear bearings. Take the smooth rods from their container. If you compare their lengths, you will see that there are two short rods, two middle length rods, and two long rods. We need the middle length rods for this step. Insert each rod into the bearings, but don't use too much force or tilt the rod. Take the four Y rod holders, 12 M3 by 10 screws, and 12 M3 square nuts. Insert two square nuts at the bottom of the rod holder and one at the side like this. Do the same to all the holders. We will now mount the Y rod holder parts. Push the rod holder onto the rod and align it like this. The screw hole should be facing up and it should be on the inner side of the Y carriage. Do the same for all four of the Y rod holders. Let's install the Y carriage. Take the carriage and place it in the frame. Secure each front holder with two M3 by 10 screws, but don't tighten them completely. 
insert the M3 by 10 screw into the hole in each rear holder and then tighten it. Move the Y carriage back and forth to align the smooth rods. Then you can tighten the screws in the front and back Y holders. On the motor shaft, there is a flat part. Place the wheel with teeth on the motor shaft. One of the screws should be facing against the flat part on the shaft. Tighten both screws slightly, but not entirely. Next, we need two Y belt holders. These are also the belt tensioners. The belt, one M3 by 30 screw, four M3 by 10 screws, one M3 nylon nut, and two M3 nuts. Take the smaller belt holder and insert the M3 nut fully into the top and insert the M3 nylon nut into the lower side here. Take the belt and one M3 by 10 screw. Bend one end of the belt around the screw like this and push it inside of the holder. Make sure that the end of the bent part is the same length of this gap in the printed part. The teeth of the belt should be facing this direction. Tighten the screw until it reaches the nut. Fix this Y belt holder to the Y carriage using an M3 by 10 screw. Take the belt along the Y axis and move it around the pulley on the Y motor and back. Make sure that the belt is inside the frame and not underneath it. Push the belt through the idler and back to the middle of the Y carriage. Take the bigger Y belt tensioner and insert the M3 nut. Take the other end of the belt and bend it around the screw. Push it in the holder and like the other holder, make sure the teeth of the belt are facing the right direction and that the short end of the belt is the same length as the 3D printed holder. Then, tighten the screw to lock the belt. Use the M3 by 10 screw to fix the Y belt tensioner to the carriage. Insert the M3 by 30 screw through both of the printed parts. Tighten it until you reach the M3 nylon nut. Make sure that the belt is straight and the top and bottom part are parallel to each other. I would say it's slightly off and not exactly parallel. Let's adjust the wheel on the motor to align it. Tighten the screw and it seems a bit better. Then, use your finger to check the belt tension. It's a bit too loose, so tighten the screw at the bottom to increase the tension. The y-axis is now done. You can take a break and then move on to the x-axis. We will now assemble the x-axis. First, take the screw bag and the 3D printed parts labeled with x-axis. Sort the screws out like what we did for the y-axis. Take the 3D printed parts and two bearings. Push the bearing to one end, flip it over, and push the second one to the other end. Do the same to both parts. There are two things we need to check. First, since the 3D printed part is longer than the length of the two bearings, leave a gap at the center. Second, do not align the bearing balls in a straight line. The second bearing should be rotated 45 degrees from the first one. This can provide better contact with the linear rod. Take the XN Motors 3D printed mount. Insert one square nut here. Then insert the M3 by 30 screw. This screw is for adjusting the X belt tension. Leave a small gap of about two millimeters so we have some room for adjustment. Take the idler's 3D printed mount and insert a M3 nylon nut at the back. Put the bearing inside and secure it using an M3 by 18 screw. Use your finger to test if it can still spin freely. Take out the remaining smooth rods. This time, we will need the two longest rods and three linear bearings. Insert the first rod straight into the two bearings. Insert the second rod into one bearing. Then, push them into the 3D printed mount like this. 
the rod with two bearings should be on top. You may not be able to push it all the way to the end. In this case, I will use a rubber mallet to knock it in completely. You should be able to see them inside this hole if they are inserted all the way to the end. Next, grab the X motor and fix it on the mount. Use three M3 by 18 screws to secure it. Insert the wheel with teeth and align one screw to the flat side of the motor shaft. The X axis installation is now done. Now, let's assemble the Z-axis. We need the left and right Z-motor, the 3D printed parts, and the screw bag with the Z-axis label. Let's sort out the screws first. First, grab the two 3D printed motor mounts. They are marked with a L for left and a R for right. Secure the mount to their sides with the M3 by 10 screws and make sure the flat part is facing up. Then, grab the two Z-axis motors. Remove the lead screw nuts from the motors, but don't throw them away since we'll need them later on. Put the two 3D printed Z screw covers on. We can now install the motor. These are also marked left and right. Then, Fix the right Z motor and secure it with four M3 by 10 screws. The motor cable should be facing back. Do the same to the left motor. Tighten it, but don't overdo it or you may break the printed parts. Grab the X axis. Insert two hex nuts on each side to fix the lead screw. Fix the lead screw nuts that we removed from the motor and fix them with two M3 by 18 screws. Do the same to both sides. Now, we can connect the X axis to the Z axis by turning the lead screw on both motors. Try to make them as level as you can by turning both lead screws at the same time. Grab the last pair of linear rods inside the tube and insert them into the Z-axis. Finally, grab the two 3D printed mounts to fix the lead screw and linear rod on both sides. Tighten them with the M3 by 10 screws. When you're done, the frame should look like this. We can now start installing the extruder. We need two bags of 3D printed parts labeled as E-axis and extruder, the last stepper motor, the box with the hot end and the fan, and the E-axis screw bag. I've already sorted them out like I did before. First, take the extruder body, which is the largest 3D printed part and is marked D1 on the back. Insert two hex nuts in the back with one square nut at the bottom. Put one M3 by 10 screw in and slightly tighten it. Then take out the FS lever from the extruder 3D printed parts bag. Insert the smaller magnet. Press it all the way down and use the clamp if you need to apply more force. It should look like this. Fix the FS lever to the extruder body, but don't overly tighten the screw. The FS lever should be able to move like this. Grab the larger magnet and insert it to the gap next to the lever. Make sure the two magnets repel each other. If you try to move them together, they should bounce back like this, like there's an invisible spring between them. Take the small square shaped 3D printed part from the extruder bag and put the steel ball inside. Slide the whole piece into the top of the extruder body and push it down all the way. When you try to play around with the lever, it should hit the ball like a pinball machine. Next, take the motor mount and put it on top of the motor. Secure it with two M3 by 10 screws. The longer arm of the mount should align with the motor cable. Grab one of the extruder gears and we want the one with a screw. 
align the screw on the flat side of the motor and slightly tighten it. Then, use a short piece of filament to align the teeth properly. This is where the filament will pass through. Adjust the screw on the gear to adjust the position. Grab the extruder cover and slide one square nut all the way in. Take the two M3 by 10 screws and insert them in these holes. Grab the hot end from the box and put it on the extruder body. Then put the motor on top of them. Grab the extruder cover and put it on top of the hot end. Insert two M3 by 40 long screws to secure them. If you flip it over, the M3 by 40 screws should be longer than the thickness of the entire assembly. Next, grab the X carriage labeled as C1. Flip it over and insert two hex nuts. Grab four square nuts and insert them like this. Then, grab the IR sensor cable. There are two ends, so get the smaller end and fix it to the X carriage. The sensor cable should run through this gap. Before we attach this to the extruder body, we also need to hide the motor cable inside this gap. Put them together, and now the IR sensor cable and the motor cable can both run through this channel. Tighten the two screws next to the hot end to connect the two parts together. Grab the IR sensor and connect it to the cable. Use one M3 by 10 screw to fix it. Take the hot end cooling fan and three M3 by 14 screws. We only need to tighten three screws and we can leave the one at this corner. Take the extruder idler and put one hex nut here. Insert both bearings into the gear. Put the gear inside the extruder idler and insert the shaft to fix it, but make sure the gear can spin freely. Before we connect this idler to the main extruder, Insert the short piece of filament to reconfirm that the first gear inside the extruder is aligned perfectly. If not, adjust it by loosening the screw on the gear. It's now aligned perfectly, so connect the idler to the main body. Fix it with the M3 by 40 screw. Then, take the last part from the extruder 3D printed parts bag. We will use this to cover the IR sensor. Use one M3 by 10 screw to secure it. We can now flip the extruder to the other side. Attach the spring to the M3 by 40 long screw and tighten it until it reaches the nut on the other side. When you try to insert some filament, you will feel some pressure and both gears should grip onto the filament tightly. Next, Grab the print fan support. Insert one M3 hex nut and mount it to the side of the extruder under the stepper motor using an M3 by 10 screw. Grab the fan adapter. Insert a square nut here and mount it at the bottom of the extruder on the same side as the back of the stepper motor. Insert a M3 by 20 screw from the other side. Mount the fourth screw to secure the fan adapter. We can now grab the blower fan and fix it on the mount. Take the bed leveling sensor and insert it into the side where you can see the hot end. Arrange the cables so they can run through the channel. Now the extruder assembly is done. This is how the front and back should look like and this is how the left and right should look like. Let's mount it on the x-axis. The side with the stepper motor and blower fan is the front. 
they should be on the same side with the yellow sticker on the printer frame. Tie the extruder on the top two bearings with zip ties. Let all the cables except the hot end cables pass between the two linear rods and run through the channel. Then, grab the x-axis belt. Push one end to the back of the extruder, and the other end should go around the stepper motor wheel. Go a long way to the idler wheel on the other side. And push the other end of the belt to the extruder, but don't cut it yet. We will leave it like this and adjust the belt tension first. We need to loosen the X motor screws. When you move the motor closer to the frame, the belt will become looser. We can adjust the belt by pushing it back to the extruder and use this screw behind the stepper motor to adjust the tension. The tension looks okay now. We can tighten the screws again on the motor. Move the extruder and check if the belt is aligned perfectly. If not, you can adjust the screw on the wheel. If everything is fine, we can tighten the screw on the wheel and trim the belt. Push it back inside the extruder and it should look like this. We are almost done. Grab the extruder back cover and insert one hex nut. Grab the cable holder and connect these two pieces with the M3 by 40 screw. Take the nylon guide cut it at an angle, and poke it inside the hole at the back of the extruder. Then, use it to guide all the cables except for the hot end and thermistor cable. Pass through the hole at the back cover, and fix the back cover with four M3 by 10 screws. Use the largest cable loom to wrap all the cables, and fix it on the cable holder with three zip ties. The hot end and thermistor cable should be fixed underneath, and use another two zip ties to secure them. Now, trim all zip ties and the extruder installation is completed. We will now start the LCD assembly. Grab the LCD mount 3D printed parts and the black bag with the LCD screen. We only have 6 M3 by 10 screws and 4 square nuts. There are 2 cables and 2 connectors. The cable with 1 black line connects to EXP1, and the cable with 2 lines connects to EXP2. Take one of the mounts with a wider extended part and align it with the side of the screen with the SD card slot. Attach two mounts on both sides. Put them in the case and fix it with two screws. Then, insert four square nuts with two for each mount. Insert four screws at the front metal plate. Mount the screen and secure it with these four screws. Attach the knob for the LCD screen. That's all you need to do for installing the LCD. In this step, we will do the heat bed and PSU assembly. Grab the power supply, the heated bed, the bag of screws, and the wire for the heated bed. We will sort out the screws first. Then, take the 3D printed cable support, the heated bed, and the wire. Insert two M3 by 10 screws into the washer. Put the wire on top of the heated bed connector at the back. Tighten the screws using two nylon nuts and use the clamp to fix the nuts at the bottom. The angle of the wire should be like this to fit the shape of the cable cover. Put the top cover on and fix it with one M3 by 10 screw and a nylon nut, just like what we did to the wire. Grab one of the remaining cable looms to wrap the wire. Put on the back cable cover, insert two hex nuts, flip it over and fix it with two M3 by 10 screws. The connector should look like this. Next, put one of the nine aluminum spacers at the center of the Y carriage. 
put one of the 9M 3x12 screws at the center of the heated bed and align them. Slightly tighten the screw, as we still need to align the rest of the spacers. Do these four sides first. Slip the spacer between the bed and the carriage and slightly tighten the screw. Then do the four corners. After they are perfectly aligned, tighten all the screws. Move the y-axis back and forth to make sure everything is fine. Flip the printer over and insert two M3 by 10 screws to the T-nuts we inserted when we assembled the y-axis. Just turn it a few circles and align the power supply to the screws and fix it. Use two M4 by 10 screws to fix the power supply to the frame. We can connect the cables to the power supply. Make sure to connect two red wires to the positive and two black wires to the negative connectors. Secure them with a Phillips screw. Connect the power panic cable with the black and white wire. The power supply installation is now done. The printer should look like this. Finally, let's install the motherboard and connect the cables. Let's take everything out and sort the screws. First, we will insert a M3 by 10 screw to one of the smaller hinges at the bottom. Mount it at the screw hole on the frame, which is the closest one to the heated bed. Put the enclosure door on the bottom hinge, and then insert another M3 by 10 screw into the top hinge. Poke the hinge into the enclosure door and mount it on the frame. The door should be able to move freely like this. Insert four square nuts to the sides of the enclosure. Then flip it over and insert another four hex nuts. Put the motherboard inside and mount four corners with four M3 by 10 screws. Don't overly tighten them or you may damage the motherboard. Grab the last cable loom from the tube and use it to wrap the X motor cable. Secure it with a zip tie and trim it. Connect this cable to the X motor connector on the motherboard and insert two M3 by 10 screws into the frame. Align the enclosure with these screws and secure them. Flip the printer over so we can do some cable management. You can tie the cable at the bottom frame and route them to the motherboard enclosure. The idea is to route the power supply cables, the LCD cables, and the Y-stepper motor cable to the same point, and guide them together to the enclosure. In order to get a better filming angle, I will remove the enclosure and put it on the table, fix the hot end cable loom with the 3D printed part, and the two M3 by 10 screws. Divide the cables into three parts, with the extruder stepper motor cable at the bottom, the bed leveling sensor at the middle, and the rest at the top. Use two zip ties to fix the cables at the top. Connect the leveling sensor and the IR sensor. The sensor should connect to the right side of the orange connector with the red wire facing up, followed by the hot end thermistor, the printer blower fan, the hot end fan, and the 24 volt heat cartridge. Take a look from the top angle. Next, we will connect the heated bed thermistor. The heated bed power will connect to the connectors with the Phillips screws. Make sure to connect the red to the positive and the black to the negative and secure the screws. Then, Connect the LCD cable with the one with a black line at the top and the one with two black lines at the bottom. Fix the heated bed wires with the 3D printed part and secure it with two M3 by 10 screws. Connect the power panic cable to the connector at the corner. Then 
we will do the X motor, Y motor, the dual Z motors, and the extruder motor. It doesn't matter which Z motor you connect first, as they are controlled by the same stepper driver. Now mount the enclosure back to the frame. Flip it over and connect the four cables from the power supply. Make sure the two red cables are connected to the positive and that the two black cables are connected to the negative. Secure them with the Phillips screws. We can now trim all zip ties. Close the enclosure and secure it with the long M3 by 40 screws. Finally, mount the spool holder. The installation is now done. Put the spring steel sheet on. Clean it and the LCD. Let's do one final check on the bed leveling sensor. It should stay about 1 to 2 millimeters higher than the nozzle. If it's too high, it can't sense the bed. We can now turn it on. When you first turn on the printer, a wizard will show up and guide you through the process. Just select yes and it will test the fan and the X, Y, and Z axes. Then it will heat up the bed. As you can see, the red light at the back corner is turned on, followed by the hot end. Everything seems okay. It will then run a calibration, which takes around 12 minutes. When it is calibrating the Z axis, it will move all the way up to let both Z motors hit the top mount. Next, you need to remove the print surface and let it calibrate the four corners of the bed. Put a piece of paper under the nozzle to keep it from scratching the heated bed. Put the print surface back on and it will do auto bed leveling. The calibration is now done. Insert some filament and it will print a simple pattern to let you adjust the Z offset. It will normally start printing in the air as the sensor is about one to two millimeters higher than the nozzle. Now, you can turn the knob to adjust the Z height. Keep moving it down until the filament sticks perfectly on the bed. The printer is ready. I will start printing the preloaded G-code on the SD card. We can start with a flat Batman logo. Since the filament I used was just some cheap white PLA, I will use the Prusa filament that came with the printer and print a 3D Benchy. The result is okay. The printer is working fine. Since I just finished assembling this printer, I haven't been able to do too many more detailed test prints. I will spend the next week doing some more testing and also doing some research on these parts and conclude whether this printer is worth its price and if I'd recommend it. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.